Hey everyone, Derek here with a bit of an impromptu analysis for the Stage Builder mode that's coming as part of the 3.0 update in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. We got a big reveal of exactly what it's like, uh, thanks to the recent trailer that also showed off Joker, and I wanted to take a closer look at the minute and a half that it actually got featured in this trailer. So this is completely off the cuff, I have no script or anything like that, it's just sort of the things I noticed, and we're just going to compile it together and see what we can see, especially because this mode comes out tomorrow, so there's isn't really that much time to do a full-blown analysis. This is just what I've noticed, and we're going to go from there. So right off the bat, we actually got to see the menu for the new Stage Builder, and my goodness, it is so much more expansive than the one in Wii U. There's actually a lot of icons here that you might not recognize, especially because, well, they're basically brand new. So looking at the left side, it appears that we can choose the textures or colors, draw, erase, Maybe select some elements to move based on this icon, which we don't actually see in action. The gear icon, which allows you to rotate any element on the screen. The rail icon, which allows you to move elements how you want. And what looks like a chisel to maybe fine tune the elements along with some items. Now, later in the trailer, we did get a demonstration of the rail, gear, and items, and right off the bat with the rail options, we see that we can set the speed, the starting location on the route drawn, how smooth the movement is, whether it's a hinge terrain, whether it returns after a collision or at the edge, and whether to show the rail path itself. So just with this one thing, there's a ton of options, and that pretty much applies to the gear as well, where it allows you to set the direction it rotates, the range of that rotation how fast it is, and if the reverse movement should be smooth. In fact, when you stop, that yellow line shows how fast the speed is as we see it start to go back and forth. Not enough to get a real sense of it, but it seems pretty obvious that that's what it does. Now we also get to see what the items are, and these include cannons, springs, new warp zones, bumpers, ladders, a bomb block, an explosive block, and a windy area. So there's only eight in total, but they seem to have a little bit more variety than what we've had in the past, including the new warp zones and the windy areas that allow you to sort of mess with things and try to come up with elements of your own. So that's pretty cool in and of itself, although it is a bit limited as far as the amount of items you can actually use. Now, returning to that original screen, we see a play icon as well, which likely shows the stage in motion without you actually playing it. That's what the test option is for, and that takes care of the left side of the menu. At the top, we have two arrows, one going back and one going forward, and we see that the one going back is an undo button, which likely means that the right option is a redo button if you undo something that you didn't want to. Next to that is the weight icon returning from Super Smash Bros. Wii U that determines how much you can actually put into the stage. And in the top right, we actually get some control options where you can hide the display, zoom in or out, and even switch to a bird's eye view or a layer view. So there's ways that you can look around and see what you really want to see. And that's most of the options that we know of so far. The only other ones we see are related to the draw option, except it's hard to draw any conclusions from what's shown. We see icons that seem to relate to backgrounds, decorations, the characters, wallpaper, and colors, but they only have check marks and not sliders, so we're not exactly sure how they change or what they exactly do. Hey guys, Andre here with a quick correction because Derek went to bed, so I'm taking over for him. And that's a fact that I'm pretty sure those icons refer to the layers. So the blue one at the top refers to the general background. The green one is the layer behind the action they can actually draw on. The yellow one is where the action happens, meaning anything you draw here will be interactive. And then the red one is the foreground, as represented by a pile of bricks that you can see through. As for the check marks, we think it might correlate to which layers are active they are actually drawing on. So it seems you might be able to draw on multiple layers at the same time. And with that, it's back to your regularly scheduled Derek programming. But at the very least, it does have the option to have a grid overlay so you know exactly where you're placing things and can make things even if you so choose. Otherwise, it appears that players can choose the background that they want. We actually see quite a few throughout this section, and they include backgrounds from stages that are already there. It's not just generic backgrounds. We can choose some from other stages. And as we can see, this includes Luigi's Mansion, Battlefield, Rainbow Cruise, Mario Galaxy with Metroid's screw attack symbol in the center, and Magicant with a Chimera created. 
Now, as we see with the Metroid screw attack symbol in the Chimera, there are a few Easter eggs in here as well. One might involve the symbol for the stage builder itself, as the stage drawn at the beginning seems to be a rough approximation of this. It could be a coincidence, but it's roughly drawn enough that it might match up, or at least was done quickly in order to get the idea across. More interesting is the Kirby stage that we see, which seems to be a recreation of Dreamland, especially with the hills and the use of Magicant as the background. And of course, there's the Star Fox reference that we see when demonstrating the rail options, but the coolest one by far is the recreation of the opening from Super Mario Bros. 3. It just really shows how versatile this stage builder can be. Now, the final thing we did want to note is that the stages will say when only four players can fit on them, not only within the creator itself, but after you finish them, as we see them marked here. And this sense of scale seems to be a major focus for the stage builder, as there seems to be an option to have an overlay of the stage that shows the height of Mario and Link, along with a generic stage, so you can get a sense of how big everything is and go from there, so you can adjust accordingly. And yeah, those are the major elements that we saw within the stage builder section of the Smash Ultimate 3.0 update trailer. But what else did you guys see? Anything that we missed? Let us know in the comments, and of course be sure to subscribe to Game Explained for more on Super Smash Bros., Joker, and the 3.0 update. Until next time, bye!